Let's have a look at how to do custom cursors in Webflow. The first thing I'm going to do is drop a div block right onto my canvas. And that's a good spot. And I'll call this cursor wrap. And now what this is going to do is we're going to set it to position fixed. We're going to have it take up the whole screen. This way that position fixed is covering our whole page everywhere we go. You can see this if I went ahead and set the color to something like white and then a little bit of transparency that as I scroll, it's covering pretty much everything. Um, although this image is popping out, so what we might want to do, and actually what we definitely want to do, is set the Z index to something super high, like 9,999.9. Just kidding, we can't put points in there. All right, so we're at 9999, and we can see it's covering everything, but we don't want to actually see that, we want that to go away. However, whenever we use position fixed, and this is hovering over everything, now I'm clicking on these links, I'm clicking on this image, Nothing is actually happening, so we're going to need a little bit of CSS for that. And to do that, I'm going to grab an embed, drop it right in here. We'll actually put it right inside of cursor wrap, and I'm going to open up some style tags and close some style tags. And we'll target the class of cursor wrap. And now CSS gives us access to this property called pointer events, and we can set that to none. And when we set that value of none, that means it doesn't really register what our cursor is doing. So now you can see I'm hovering and clicking on Webflow here, and I can click on things again. All right, back to cursor wrap. So let's highlight that class there. We're going to center everything using Flexbox. So let's set our display to flex. We'll set it to vertical, and we'll align center and justify center. And now we get to build our cursor. This is the fun part. Let's drag another div. We'll just use a simple HTML cursor for this one. And this will say is cursor. And cursor is going to get a width of, I don't know, one rem and a height of one rem. That's probably a little too big. So let's go to 0.5 and 0.5. And I'm liking that. So we also want to give it a background color. So let's give it a background color of pure white. We want this thing to be very visible. And we'll set the border radius to 50%. So it's just a simple little circle. Okay, now that we've got everything set up in Navigator, it's time to add the interaction. We'll add the interaction to the element with the class of cursor wrap. So we'll come over here. We're going to set the page trigger when mouse moves in viewport. So let's go ahead and select there. And I only want to trigger this on desktop and above. So we'll remove the check marks from tablet and phone. If you're using a mouse on your tablet or phone, I don't know who you are. Anyways, let's set up smoothing to 90% and we'll keep mouse X and mouse Y resting states at 50%. That just means that the resting state is right smack dab in the middle, which is exactly where we want it. Let's go ahead and click the plus sign here for a new animation. We'll call this cursor follow, and we can hit enter to save that. And now I'm going to select cursor over here in navigator and under mouse X actions. I want this to move from negative 50 viewport widths. So negative 50 VW, press enter. If I get rid of navigator here, we'll see the cursors all the way over here. And then at 100% of the viewport, we want to go to 50 viewport widths. And now we have our cursor all the way over here on the right side. Now we're going to do the exact same thing for mouse Y, but we're going to do it in the Y axis and we'll do it from negative 50 viewport heights up to positive 50 viewport heights. So that's all done. Let's go ahead and live preview and see how this looks. Great, we've got this little dot following our mouse, kind of fun little design element that you could add to your website. Let's go ahead and save that. And just in preview here, we see that this thing is following us still. And so that is great. Now we could bump the smoothing up even more to something like 98. And let's have a preview. That's a little bit too high. So let's bring it back down to something like 92. And I like that. I think that's, I think that's the sweet spot. Now you'll notice that I'm previewing and when I come off of the window here, we get the thing stuck on the edges of the window. So what we can do is that we'll register using some custom CSS when the mouse is outside of the viewport and we'll set the opacity on our cursor to be invisible. So to do that, let's pop back into Navigator here and in our HTML embed, we're gonna write some custom code. Now let's go ahead and target the body element. And then within that, we will look for the class of cursor. And we're gonna set the default opacity to be zero in this case. So if I went ahead and save this and close, we can see we don't even see our cursor anymore. And that's great because maybe we're working on our Webflow project and we really don't wanna see it while we're working on the Webflow project. So we set its default state to be invisible. Bring the custom code back up and we'll just copy this line of code right here. 
the CSS, but instead we're gonna set the pseudo selector on the hover event. So when that happens, we wanna set the opacity to one. And now when we hover, we can see that the dot is there and then it's gone, there, it's gone. And the last thing we wanna do is that it's a little bit too instantaneous for me right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply a transition to opacity, something like 300 milliseconds and an ease is fine. Now let's preview and we can see, boom, our cursor is following us and then it kind of disappears when we get to the edges and it comes back. So I think this is a nice little touch to add to that. Now it's time to build out our hover interaction for any link that we have on the page. In this way, I'm gonna target anything that has a class of cursor hover. And so I've applied cursor hover to all four of our links as well as a combo class to our image link block. So let's call cursor hover there. And so this class is on all five of those items now. So let's go ahead and select one and build out our interaction. So this is gonna be an element trigger on mouse hover. And we want this to happen on desktop only and we want it to affect the class. Now let's start an action. We're gonna start an animation. We'll call this cursor hover in. And I'm gonna start by setting the size to its default value, which we set to 0.5 rem, I believe. And uh, this is set as initial state. And right now I'm grabbing the wrong item. I need to change the target over to our cursor over here. So that's good, all elements with the class, perfect. And we're doing the size, but we also want to tween the opacity. So it's gonna start at 100% as the initial state. And then we'll take the opacity down to something much uh, more see-through, like 20%. And we'll set the size to be uh, two rem by two rem, I suppose. Oh, two rem, just like that. And let's set some easing on this. So we'll just do the default ease. And I think the duration should be something like uh, 0.2 seconds, pretty fast. So now when we hover in, we should see that coming up, but we don't have our hover out done yet. So let's go ahead and program that in. So we're gonna duplicate this. We're gonna select an action to start an animation. We're gonna call cursor hover in two. But in this case, we're gonna rename it to cursor hover out. And I'm gonna delete these two. And these are no longer initial states. So 100% there is good, 0.2 seconds on an ease. And the same thing for the size here. No longer the initial state, 0.2 seconds on an ease. And let's drop those so they happen together at the same time. I'm saving that and let's preview. And now, okay, we're hovering in and hovering out, hover in, hover out. It's looking good, hover in, hover out. It's working on all of our links and the image one as well. Now, the other thing I like to do is take our class of cursor wrap and let's go ahead and get rid of navigator here. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna create a component out of this and we're gonna call this cursor and we'll create it. And now let's go ahead and make a duplicate page. So to home copy, sure, why not? And if we, we already have the cursor in there, but now we can drag and drop the cursor in on every page that we're using. So we can see it's already working. Um, yeah. If you like this video on how to create custom cursors using Webflow interactions and just a little bit of custom CSS, then I think you'll really like the interaction I built for stunning video grid rotation. I'm gonna link the video right up here. So be sure to check that out. And also please like and subscribe. It helps me out a lot. And I can't wait to see you in the next video. Bye-bye.